string functions in LabVIEW. Um, so they live in the string functions palette. I'll start off with a really simple one, the string length. We'll put that on. And uh, I'm going to create a string control. I could come over here and uh, come to the panel, choose the controls and indicators palette, and uh, look at string controls and put one on like that, and that's fine. Uh, I'll call it input string. I could do the same thing to get the indicator, but instead I'm going to come over here uh, and I'll right click on um, this function, this string length function. Let's get some context sensitive help for this function, control H. And you can see uh, this is a um, fairly simple function. You give it a string and it tells you how long, how many characters are in that string. So its input you can see is uh, purple, meaning it's a, a string, a series of characters. And its output is blue, which means it's a, a number and an integer number at that. Uh, so we'll wire this up here, uh, tab a few times to get the wiring tool. And uh, I could come over here and put uh, a numeric indicator on. That'll be fine. It'll be uh, the string length. Now the trouble with this, it's not a huge problem. You can just, you can absolutely do this. You'll notice that the string length is, um, because it's a numeric indicator, by default it uses a double precision representation. And you can wire that up and that'll be fine. And let's... Um, Let's put some text in this box, and if we run it, we find that this string is 12 characters long. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. The space counts as a string. If we throw some extra spaces on the end, it doesn't look any different, but it does include these extra spaces. They are there, and when you run it, you see that they're included. Now. You'll notice that the output of the string function is meant to be an integer, um, and yet we're using a double precision number. And MathCAD, or sorry, LabVIEW doesn't mind if you uh, if you mix these data types. They're both numerics. You see the little tiny red dot at the input. That means um, LabVIEW is actually converting it from an integer to a double precision number. And there's no harm in that at all. You can ignore it. You could also come and change the representation. Uh, to an integer, but then you go, good heavens, which one? Uh, there's eight different integer representations, these integers, um, and these ones. These are unsigned, so they're always positive. These can be positive or negative, but all of them are integers. Which one is it supposed to be? We could go, oh, I don't know, how about U64 and try that. And we still have the little red dot. It's not a U64 that comes out of here, it's something else. So what we could have done, I'll delete this and control B to get rid of the bad wires. Rather than creating the numeric indicator for the string length on the front panel, quite a good way to do it is just right click on the terminal of the function that we're using and create the indicator. The charm of that is it makes the right kind of indicator, not just a numeric, but an integer. And not just any of the eight possible integers, but the one that's actually supposed to be, the I32, as it happens program really runs the same and you don't really notice much of a difference. There's some other string functions we might investigate. There's concatenate strings, which I showed in a previous video. It's resizable, so it allows you to join strings together. I can connect this string and I'll right click here and create another control. And I'll just uh, call it string2. And put some text in here. And you'll notice this text box is not actually big enough, is it? This contains the words, here's some more text, or words to that effect. We could resize it so you can see the whole thing. Also, string controls and indicators can be uh, as big as you want them to be. Um, there's only a few characters in each of these, but you could put vast quantities of text in here. You could put the entire text of, let's say, Moby Dick in here, and it'll, it'll go. 
Um, if you have a lot of text in a box, you can uh, right click on it and under visible items you can turn on um, a scroll bar. And then if you have lots of text in here, let's see, I'll put in lots of text by just copying this a bunch of times. And now you see that we can use this scroll bar. I'll delete most of that. So this concatenate function is going to take two strings and just simply join them together. Uh, we'll create the appropriate indicator, which is, again, a string. And when we run this and resize it so we can see it, we see that it's taken these two strings and just joined them together. If you want to join three or four or five strings or more together, you could just resize this function. But you got to be careful. Uh, if you make this bigger than you need, and we have these unused input terminals here, you notice the program won't run. And it'll tell you why it won't run, because concatenate strings function contains unwired or bad terminals. If you double click this error, it takes you right to it. And the fix is to just make sure you don't have any unused terminals. There's some other neat string functions. Um, one of them is uh, a string subset. Uh, so we could take the input string. And this allows us to take uh, a piece of this string out. So the way that it's done is you have to tell it what part of the string you want. And you do it with two numbers. The first one's an offset. So we'll create, uh, well, we'll just create a constant for this. And we'll create a constant for the other number as well. Put them where we can see them. By the way, these constants that were created have labels built in, so you can actually right click on them and under visible items you can see their label and see what they are. So if we put in an offset of uh, 2 and a length of 3 and create an indicator for the output of this function a little crowded on screen. Here's the substring here. When we run it, we get this. We get a string that's three long, because that's the length of the string, starting at uh, two. Uh, so um, that's one, sorry, zero, one, two. So we start there at the, the L and take, uh, a, starting there, take the next three characters. So we can use this to um, get part of a string if that's necessary. We could change this uh, to 0 and 1, and when we run it now we get basically the first letter of this. If we wanted the very last letter, well, what we could do is for the offset, replace it with the string length and run it. We don't get anything because the string length is 16 and if we start it, oh sorry, let's change this to just uh, hello world and run it again. The length is now 11 but that's at the very end of the string so we don't want um, our offset to be 11, we want it to be 11 minus 1 we could go into this function and break it and insert a minus one, but either, easier than that is you can right click on the wire and choose to insert from the numeric palette, say, a decrement function, a minus one function. So what this uh, VI is going to do now is look at this input string which contains hello world, it's 11 characters long, it's going to find the length of that string and find it's 11, it's going to take that 11 and subtract one and end up with 10 in this subset function, I'll show its label, is going to uh, take the 11th or the 10th letter in and give us that. So it ends up giving us the very last letter of uh, this string. And if we change it, add one more character to it, well now its length is 12 and we get the 11th character, which is that. So we can get the first or the last character. The last character is a little trickier. We have to do this length check and subtract one from it. 
Another string function that we can use sometimes that's quite handy is um, match pattern. We want to look at the context sensitive help for match pattern. It's a little bit tricky. It has a lot of connections to it. The first one uh, on the upper left here is the string itself. So you give it a string and you give it another string. It's called regular expression. But this is something that you're going to look for within the string. And what this is going to do is going to find that and it can give you everything before that and everything after that. Before substring and after substring. There's this one here, this match substring. It just gives you the same character that you're looking for, the same string you're looking for. This is a little useless. It also tells you where it found it in the string. This is kind of a handy function because you can use it to break up, let's say, a name. Here's uh, a name, and it has to be a name with a first name, and then a space, and then a last name for this little trick. But if what I want to do is take the string Neil Walker and get just Walker, the last name, well, what I'll do is uh, wire the input string that contains Neil Walker into this terminal. And then for regular expression, what I'm going to do is create a constant here. And this is the thing that it's looking for. I could just put a space here. So this, this looks like an empty string, but it's not. It has a space in it. So what this function is going to do is going to take the string that contains Neil Walker, and it's going to look for the space, and it's going to find it right there. And here, it's going to give you, out of this, this before substring um, tab, it's going to give you everything before that space or everything after it. So if I use a create a control or an indicator here, well, this is really um, the first name. Not this one, but after substring, that's going to be the last name. Hello? Busy, for Sam. Sorry. When I run this, uh, look, Neil and Walker gives me the first and last names by looking for the space in between them. There's lots of other string functions, but uh, these ones...